Welcome to the Cold Start Corner, your source for the practice launch pad to bring your practice ownership vision to reality. I'm Eric Matei, and our goal here at the Cold Start Corner is to educate and empower the emerging practice owner through each step of the Cold Start journey. So what do you say we roll our sleeves up and get to work? During the course of this journey that is the Cold Start Corner, our goal here is to really educate and empower you on all of the decisions that are gonna go into um, building your cold start. Because the fact is this, starting a business, any business, is a lot of work. There's no two ways about it. And because of that workload, it's normal to feel a bit overwhelmed. So our number one goal in this episode of the Cold Start Corner is to take what is an otherwise massive, overwhelming journey and organize into three simple phases. So what do you say we jump right into it? Starting a business is a lot like starting the construction of a home. And you wanna start with a good, solid foundation. So the first phase of the cold start process is all about the planning phase. Once again, establishing that good, solid foundation upon which to move forward and, and build out the business. Now there are two key components to this planning phase. The first of these is going to be the financial forecast and feasibility analysis. And what is the financial forecast and feasibility analysis? This is where you're taking the time to quantify all of the financial requirements of the venture, as well as project the cash flows and conduct sensitivity analysis. So specifically, you'll get into exploring things like your startup costs, right? Your capital investment. You'll go through some revenue and expense modeling exercises. We'll put all that together to create cash flow projections and then pull in the financing requirements to establish financial feasibility of the venture. Oh, by the way, side note, all of that stuff I just listed, we're gonna actually get into in the next future episodes where we're really gonna dig into it. But understand that again, financial forecast and feasibility analysis is an integral part of this planning phase. But there's a second piece to the planning phase of your venture, and that is going to be creating your business plan. And I like to look at creating the business plan kind of like that treasure map, right? Our little, our little treasure map there. So the business plan is where you're taking that financial forecast and feasibility analysis. Again, kind of the, this quantitative assessment of what your venture will look like. And you're creating a blueprint around it, right? So that blueprint really brings together your vision into a tangible reality and, and really gets into everything about the company, right? Company description, your products and services. This is where you dig into market analysis. You start to develop your strategy and implementation protocols and kind of pull everything together. It really gives you a simple blueprint to follow as you embark on this process. Now, mind you, this planning phase serves two purposes. One is to provide you peace of mind regarding the financial feasibility of the venture and projecting those cash flows. But two, with the business plan, is actually creating that blueprint, the likes of which as you go down this path, you're not having to make decisions based on kind of what do I want to do, but more like how do I want to implement it, right? But the second key thing to remember about this planning phase is that when it comes time to meet with the bank and secure financing, which is one of the early stages of the process that we're going to be getting into in a future episode of the Cold Start Corner, but the more thorough and detailed your financial forecast and feasibility analysis and your business plan, the more thorough and detailed that is, the better a candidate you are for the bank and for the underwriters to approve you for the financing you're seeking to get your venture off the ground. So once you've got this foundation laid, this foundation established through the planning phase of your cold start, then it's to enter the second phase. And the second phase of your cold start is all about developing the cold start, right? And there are two key components here, okay? The first is going to be the office location and build out. There's our little office. Wow, it kind of looks more like one of the houses that the three bears lived in than an office. But anyhow, uh, your office location and build out. And this is where you're going to dig into quantitative and qualitative geospatial analysis for really the optimal practice placement. Now, it's interesting here because this is where you're going to want to factor in a lot of local socioeconomic trends, 
uh, demographic trends, property values, household income, all of these things that kind of play into what is that ideal location going to look like. But it doesn't stop there, right? Because it's also in this stage of the game that you're really going to want to dig into establishing what your renovation budget is going to look like, right? And again, we're going to be getting into this in a future episode of the Cold Start Corner. But know that this development phase is composed of office location and build out. Then the second key area has to do with your technology and workflows. And I put SOPs here. Do you know what SOPs are? SOPs stand for Standard Operating Procedures. And you see your technology suite and your standard operating procedures, at least in this day and age, it's, 22, it's 2022, right? They kind of go hand in hand. So technology and practice workflows is all about establishing standard operating procedures and utilizing the business solutions that are going to maximize your ROI and minimize overhead and headaches for you and your team. So this development phase, when we get into this in future episodes, we're actually going to have an entire episode devoted entirely to office location and build out. We will likewise have an entire episode devoted to technology and your standard operating procedures. So... We started in the planning phase with a good solid foundation, our financial forecast and feasibility analysis, as well as our business plan. Then we got into the development phase. It's all about office location and build out, as well as your technology and standard operating procedures. And now it's time to get into that third phase of your cold start, and that is the launch. I don't know about you, but I get goosebumps just looking at that word launch. It's just... It's so exciting to think that you get to that point where it's time to really launch your business and just absolutely blow it up. Now, when you get to this launch phase, there are two key components of the launch phase. One is going to be your people. So I'm going to put HR and, oh, I don't know, a smiley face, right? Because we know that when you bring your team in, the best people, smiles on their face, getting everything done. But team recruitment and retention is a key component, a vital component of the launch phase. And this gets into establishing your comprehensive resource, uh, human resource functions, including employee recruitment, onboarding, employee evaluations, what your disciplinary protocols are going to look like, your office policies uh, leading up to and including termination as well as more future-oriented to consider physician recruitment as the time will come to bring in an associate, as well as your contract construction and negotiation to build and retain top talent for your team. So while HR in team recruitment and retention is a key piece of the launch of your business, the other key piece is the high-velocity launch. And we like to put that just an upward arrow. As a matter of fact, you see that little trajectory? To heck with this slope trajectory. We're talking about a launch onward and upward. And your high velocity launch gets into your marketing strategy. And you know, in this day and age with the advent of technology and digital and social media, truly providing and presenting an omni-channel marketing strategy to maximize your scheduled exams and really position your practice for that high velocity launch. So to pull it all together, to pull it all together, we start with realizing there is a lot of work that's going to go into this. And by the way, like you're not going to be left alone because all of these areas we're going to really dig into in a whole lot of detail in future episodes of the Cold Start Corner. But the goal here is to start to put into context what is a lot of work we organize into three simple phases, the planning, the development, and the launch of the practice, and then get into some of these sub, these sub areas. So, to wrap things up, your homework assignment, really the number one piece before we even start digging into these technicalities in these future episodes, your number one assignment, establish your vision. Truly, what is the scope of care that you want to provide in your community? What type of experience do you want to deliver to patients what type of care you're providing? What type of culture do you want to establish in your practice? So I'll ask that you take that, reflect on that. Reflect on that and think about it. And as you're thinking about it, list everything, right? Because it's right now in the planning phase really that everything goes or anything goes, right? Believe you me, there's going to be time in the future where we're going to start 
you know, removing things from the list because it's not applicable. But right now, just let your mind run wild in establishing your vision. On the next episode of the Cold Start Corner, we're going to start really digging into the work. And we're going to start with jumping into the financial forecast and feasibility analysis, again, that first step of your planning phase. I'm Eric Matei, signing off from the Cold Start Corner. Have a great week, and we look forward to you tuning in next time.